Hello there and welcome back to the next episode of Yosemite Valley Zoo. Yeah, you might already hear it from my voice. It's a little bit um, scratchy, I want to say. It's actually awful, but there is no way in, in not recording today. Also, it's because I had Christmas party yesterday evening from work. It was actually quite okay in terms of uh, partying and I'm not even that tired and stuff. But the problem is with always these parties, the music is so freaking loud. And if you want to talk to someone... It's basically streaming the whole night. I didn't know that this will happen, so I wanted to record this episode in advance so that I do have this one day now to recover for my voice, but apparently I had some issues with the game and I had some issues finishing off this episode, um, so it wasn't possible, but then it was, you know, I, I finished it in time for the Christmas party, but there was no time left um, to, yeah, to just record the episode. So I went in and just had a good party, and tonight I'm, or just today, I'm recording it right off for you because the reason... Um, you know, I could have moved this to tomorrow, but the reason for why I'm not doing this is basically because I want to make the switcheroo uh, between the episodes. As I promised, um, I will have two episodes a week. This time will be three episodes this week, um, mainly because uh, I want to switch around the, the kind of... Um, content of the episode because today's episode will be focused mainly on building there's no animal involved in such kind of thing because you know last time we had the attention bison i hope that was the pronunciation was corrector or better correctors just and anyways um because i got so many good comments from you guys and i'm going to go uh, into the comments anyways in a few seconds um but i got so many great comments in terms of pronunciation stuff and i'm it's always really helpful when you guys explain this in, in a nice way and um, yeah, I mean, now I can really work with that and say, oh, like a bison. Um, I mean, maybe that's not 100% perfect, but it's at, at least I know how it should be, so that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, in today's episode, we are focusing uh, on building and uh, landscaping this mountain. So I, I wasn't happy at all with how the mountain looked in the in the end, um, or like in the back of, of this habitat. I needed to tilt the mountain a little bit more because the sun projection towards it was a little bit too dark and I needed to change the angle so it catches a bit more light and um, yeah for the darker parts in in the bottom area as you can see I I put down a lot more trees to make sure that the foliage is kind of covering off uh, the shades a little bit more so it appears to be uh, still a bit of a brighter mountain and honestly it looks fantastic in the end it really looks not only decent it looks really good the only thing I'm not uh, like not 100% happy with is the shading of the rocks but um, that's another story I hopefully can get into later on because I, I couldn't just get the you know I couldn't get it integrated seamlessly enough to make it really look believable but as you can see this looks already a million times better than it does at the beginning so yeah it, um, I'm quite happy with how it turned out it was really very very important that I did it it was really you know worth the effort I guess because like I did so much landscaping already and you can see I'm I'm even trying to now build from from this position over here to kind of create this um, from an angle where it actually um, must be also change the um, positioning of the trees also according to your feedback because um, yes it's a natural uh, kind of uh, habitat but the thing is if you look at where the bisons actually live in uh, the Yosemite Valley National Park, they um, they basically uh, Yosemite National Park. Well, just put the valley in whatever. Um, basically, they they are living mostly on plains and uh, and and you know at the outsides of these very big fields of grass, there is you know mostly a little bit of a of kind of a foresty but if i would make it like realistically sized this whole valley must be like this grass field and to the outsides we have this so i kind of scaled it all down to to fit into this one area over here and that's basically it now um we are getting into the actual backstage building while you see now the backstage building being done i am switching to the comments of uh, some of the last episodes i'm going to read out some of those not not many but just to give you an idea what i found super amazing by you guys you guys did an amazing job in and bringing bringing all the comments and I really hope that you do the same in today's episode as well give me feedback towards the building and the mountain how it looks and also what you want to see next I can already tell you in tomorrow's episode or maybe Monday I'm gonna see how I'm able to finish it off um, will be the pronghorn and I, I have a certain reason why I put the pronghorn where I put it and then uh, we will have the first bigger area where I definitely need your feedback according to I, I really want to go with a habitat that has some smaller animals but that is kind of a, more or less like a bigger habitat that has several animals uh, in it and 
yeah, we have to decide which kind of animals this will be, but I I kind of have some ideas already I want to discuss with you um, in the next episode and in Monday's live stream, obviously. Monday evening, again, live stream, you know where. Uh, I, I am not allowed to say that, but you guys know where you find my live stream, so uh, I, I really hope that you guys uh, do find it well and then we're gonna have some fun again on monday building it actually so now uh let's start with the first comment it's from uh, dirika and she posted under my pfl parking uh, video and this one killed me it was so freaking funny is it that one uh oh no that's the other one that the other one will will just the other one is just amazing okay so dirika said dear zoo director mr and camel i'm looking forward to visit your zoo with my family while we are on a vacation in yosemite valley but there's one thing we are generally concerned about. As my ability of orientation is really bad, I hope I will be able to find the entrance of your zoo once I parked our car. Fortunately, I have an idea to make this task as easy as possible and entertain your youngest visitors at the same time. What do you think about decorating the path from the parking lot to the entrance with prints of footsteps of some animals so your guests will have some fun and guidance following them? If that will be possible to create, I would be even more excited about our visit in a few months. See you soon and best regards, Dirika. I mean, come on guys, that is amazing. First of all, the idea is amazing. Um, I think, yeah, I think that there's a good chance that we can do something like that. It's a really co cool idea and I have seen this already in, in several zoos and, and parks and stuff. So yeah, it's generally a, a very great idea. And honestly, the way you wrote this and the way this is, this is kind of packed into this little story, I love it. Amazing. So next amazing message, which is not really amazing for the zoo itself, but the message itself was just I don't know, it was just uh, something else. It's so good. Okay, so I, I'm trying to put all my emphasis in and, and try to read it out in a way she would have kind of, you know, said it. So it's from Ravina Forstadt. Uh, I hope that was kind of pronounced anywhere near correct. Um, so my children and I... No, sorry, I need to start over again. Dear Yosemite Valley Zoo, my children and I had been looking forward to visiting your zoo ever since it opened. But today, as we drove up to the park, our car, we had a quite a shock. Suddenly, an escaped peafowl jumped in front of our car. I can't get the image of blood and feathers on the window out of my head, and the sound of my children crying is still ringing in my ears. I demand some sort of compensation. Not so kind regards a mother of two traumatized children, Ravena. This is so... It is so amazing. I mean... The, the message itself with the content obviously isn't. Um, no one likes dead, dead, dead peafolds um, and, and shocked people. But hell, that is such a great comment. It's it's bringing in such a cool and, and, and great uh, interaction with you guys. I was really laughing hard when I was reading. I was like, okay, I feel bad, but I, some, somehow I need to laugh. It's it's just so good. Um, and the way, again, as the way it is packed is, is just so good. I mean... That, that's the fun I want to have with you. This is kind of the inside stories we need, you know. If you don't watch the episodes and the, the failing pfalz running, roaming around, you know, people don't know what it is about. But according to all the likes that comment got, many people knew what's going on. And I love that. I mean, this is exactly the stories we need. Um, as some people might still you know call me mexican camel for a reason which still is an inside story but I, you know these are the things that we definitely need and it's so good so thanks a bunch for those two amazing comments i've got another one which is from uh the latest video and it's from jj rocks 22 and he says um he creates his own character now and then continues with a wonderful comment so he says um a stoic man with reddish copper skin, a long dark hair pulled back into a braid approach as clad in natural jewelry of gems and feathers. I'm not an engineer, park owner, supervisor or anything of the sort, but I have seen what you've done with the bison habitat and I would like to applaud your emphasis on doing your best to keep it natural looking and an immersive environment not only for the guests but more importantly the animals. I truly hate to see creatures behind obvious walls making them seem more like slaves. I would like to strongly advise taking the practice into further uh, future habitats so the animals don't feel like prisoners but rather free roaming as it is a beautiful sight to behold and makes the creatures lives a much happier one. Awesome. I love this one. Yeah, um, and, and I mean this is this is just the, uh, the kind of task that I um, I'm up to. And I definitely want to do it as much as possible. Um, and I am also not a fan of these obvious walls and barriers and stuff. So, yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely trying to my my best to to create this. Anyways, okay, enough of the comments. Uh, I will do this in future episodes uh, again. Uh, I cannot promise to do this every time uh, because you know I love that there are so many comments, but I'm I'm always like browsing through them, saving some of them to kind of make up a commentary about this, and also kind of need to still talk about what I'm doing, which is what I do now. So, um, yeah. 
yeah, you've seen that I built this backstage building. I'm fairly happy with how this turned out, to be honest, because the backstage building itself is um, something which usually doesn't take that much um, atten uh, kind of uh, people don't have that much attention for them, but they are very important for your zoo in general. And in terms of realism, this this is kind of a way too small backstage area. So I'm, I'm I have an idea how to fix this. Um, there is kind of something I want to do in the next uh, bigger episode of backstage buildings and stuff uh, because I feel like this has to be connected a bit better with the backstage so uh, also next episode will be focusing on that issue like after the episode tomorrow or Monday then the Wednesday episode will be very interesting hopefully for you guys because it will be focusing a whole lot on on these kind of things like uh, where we put the pathing path where we put the staff pathing path and and you know just organizing a bit more where we have our stuff going because now as we are approaching the zoo and we're moving further into the zoo from from this natural habitat from the bisons which again which was an easy one because this was one of your ideas to keep one of the Habitats more more like it's it's not even a habitat. This kind of seems like being uh, a reserve for the animals that is outside of the actual zoo, and the experience of the zoo is just created to make like kind of feel part of it. So yeah, but now we are building a little bit of a foresty area, and I have to give a huge credits here to um, Mr. Mike Sheets, better known as N7, and he's done some amazing botanical stuff lately, um, and there is a lot of good stuff what he he's not even doing all the time but also what he's talking about what he's doing is amazing still but he's also talking about a lot of the insights why he's doing the stuff he does with the foliage and so and one thing that really stuck to my head is the, the fact that a zoo always also tries to make the the pathing and the, the way fighting and uh, finding an experience the way fighting is what i do by the way with the game anyways that's another topic so i wanted to kind of create a bit more of an interesting approach to that area um also which gives us a clever way of hiding away the backstage area so it naturally kind of uh, embeds in here and so I was building this little area over here, working a bit better with water together so that we have these kind of small ponds here, making it look like a bit more part of Yosemite National Park-ish look to it so that it is a bit more dense, foresty, uh, but still you have a nice look um, when you look towards the mountains. So there's, uh, you will see in the in the cinematics at the end, this kind of a cool look through the, through the trees and stuff and you still have this a somewhat more narrow pathway to guide through and um, it, it's more of a journey rather than just a path guiding you somewhere and uh, yeah I, I just tried a few things here with the foliage I'm, I'm fairly happy with the result later on uh, I will do a bit more next episode uh, I can already tell you there's a bit of fixing going on because some of the sidelines were not working as I wanted and I made this um, a little bench cover that works I will upload now this is also a decision I made lately I will upload more of the um, more of the things uh, earlier into the workshop. So I'm, I'm uploading the entrance as people were asking. I'm uploading uh, the bench cover, for example. And as soon as I have another blueprint, blueprintable kind of uh, building, I will definitely upload this too. However, that's it about today's episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you really enjoyed this uh, landscaping and backstage stuff and the little idea with the door I already had in, in beta. And uh, yeah, you can see now how this turned out to be looking. And in this shot, you can really see how this works with the mountains in the background. So yeah, we are just moving through some of the foliage here, but I, I, f I still feel like you, you get the point. Uh, when we're just moving through here, you can see, you can see now wonderfully the, the mountain in the back. You can still not see what there is. There's this slight incline. It gives you this kind of natural feeling and I really love it. I hope you guys do too and now this is it for today's episode. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and let me know your feedback as always down below in the comments. I'm happy to answer most of it in the comments and every now and then I'm gonna bring them into the episodes actually as today. So have a good one guys and bye bye. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRandCamel. Also big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click that sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.